Hello and welcome to the National Leadership Briefing. My name is Doug Sharp and I will be your host for today. We have an awful lot to cover again. I don't think that's going to change, actually. The, the pace that things are coming at us in our nation right now, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. I have never seen anything like this in the last 20 some odd years of me looking and focusing on various aspects of society, culture, politics, and government. So we, got, we have to make absolutely the best use of our time, but I am going to get you out in exactly one hour. We will honor your time today and ensure that happens. And I want to make sure that as we deal with some some of these tougher issues that we're going to be talking about today, because there's some real, there's a need for us to, to, to take a look at hard things at times. I just want to remind you that we do not do that to give you the impression that there is some sort of hype need for hyperbolic language. But I do want you to understand that as we deliver the solutions to the challenges that we're facing, that you understand the importance of paying attention to those solutions, because they are right in front of us. We're never, ever going to just light our hair on fire, as I say, and run down Main Street. We're always going to deliver up the challenge with the solution. And of course, remember the number one rule around here is that if you are not having a good time doing what we're asking you to do, then you're doing it wrong. And you need to check back with us because we do definitely want to be happy warriors. We do not we though be those want to be those grumpy people that are in the corner with nobody around them. We want to be surrounded by people, gathering people to our, our issues and our ideas and sharing them openly and energetically and having a good time about it. So so even though we're going to look at some stuff, tough stuff today, we're going to make sure you have a good time as well. So all right, let's take a look at what we're going to cover today because it's super important. We've got, a, we've got a theme that is going to be the backdrop of the National Leadership Briefing today, and that is the importance of working strategically, having a plan, and maintaining focus. So again, the theme today is the importance of having a, working strategically, having a plan, and maintaining focus. So that's going to be woven through all of our segments today. Now, and on that, the first segment, of course, that we're going to be focusing on is we're going to be focusing on our rally points, the things that we rally around here on the National Leadership Briefing. But it, it, and you know, you're probably going to go, okay, Doug, you're going to talk about the four pillars, aren't you? And there they are right there. You're going to, you bet I am, because I want to make sure we're clear on them, but I want to do it from a little bit different perspective today. So first of all, our rally points, that's the first thing. The next thing, because we're talking about having a plan and working strategically, I wanted to show you our dashboard of what our plan is here at the National Leadership Briefing and at Canada Family Action. So you can see how each of the components of everything we do here and how we serve you, how that fits into our overall strategy. Then the next segment we're going to go straight to after that is I'm going to introduce you to a solution provider who is going to help you work your plan locally. Because remember, our plan is to serve you where you are, dealing with the issues you need to deal with locally. And you're going to see that when you see our desk, our dashboard when we lay it out. But then I'm going to introduce you to an individual who has a heart for transforming families and communities, who is willing to help you do the same thing that he's doing in his community. And you're going to be blessed by this. And he's got some great news about an event that's coming up as well that you're going to want to be at. Then after that, we're going to go to the a conversation came up a while ago about different Senate bills that were going through the Senate. And there was a lot of attention that was sort of uh, pulled away from the solutions that we were offering to these conversations. So we're going to do a little training today on, on Senate bills. And I'm going to give you some tools so you're going to really quickly be able to evaluate what it is you need to focus on and when you need to focus on it whether you're somebody who's an activist who's going to get out there with your finances and throw it at, at an issue or whether you're somebody who's an activist who wants to get out there and door knock and, and put put your blood sweat into it or maybe you're a prayer somebody who wants to pray when things happen well i'm going to give you a tool today that you're going to appreciate receiving and that is with focused on again we're using this whole sense conversation and the bills that's been swirling around lately about what's going on there so you can it'll help you there and then we're going to focus on the war room strategy now as you know for those of you who've been tracking with us 
we launched something called the NLB, the National Leadership Briefing War Room Canada, because what we found was is that here on the National Leadership Briefing, we are a teaching and training focus. That's what we hold as the focus here on the briefing. But we obviously also see these opportunities where we can capitalize and advance the things that we believe in into society, culture, politics, and government. So we need to execute strategies as well when we see those opportunities come up. We also also need to prepare ourselves so that when we see threats coming against us and the things that we believe in, we need to ex op launch strategies to defend against those threats. Well, if you do that on the National Leadership Briefing all the time, then you're, it's going to gobble up our teaching and training time. So we launched the War Room Canada strategy and Operation Red Flag as, as a separate component. So we're going to talk about that strategy today, and I'm going to shine a bit of a light on that as well. And I'm going to introduce you to a special guest when we talk about that as well. Remember that. I'm going to introduce you to someone special today, someone who's really near and dear to me. You're going to, you're going to love meeting them. All right. And then, uh, and then we're going to close today, and we're going to make sure that we talk about the importance of the next steps. Like, where do we go from here? It's, it's, we can't waste any time between the time that we meet. So we want to make best use of the time that we have together. All right. So thanks so much for your time today. We're going to watch this real short video, and then we're going to come back and let's have a look at our rally points and why rallying around things, especially the rally points, is so important. Back in a flash. These are the things that we believe in. First, that parents have the right to raise their children the way they want. Second, that those we elect to serve us in civil government must respect and defend our right of belief and freedom of religion. Number three, that the laws and policies of civil government must provide for the safety and security of the citizens, especially the vulnerable among us. And number four, that it is inappropriate to heap debt upon the backs of our children and future generations. They came from you. They're your pillars. They're the things that you believe. Okay, we're back. And we are, remember, we're focusing on the importance of working strategically, having a plan and maintaining focus. And our first segment we're going to talk about today, of course, is the rally points, the things that we rally around. But I want to do it from a little bit different perspective today. First of all, you know, the four pillars, they're on the banner behind me that parents have a right to raise their children the way they want, that those we elect to serve us in civil government must respect and defend our right of belief and freedom of religion, that the laws and policies of civil government must provide for the safety and security of the citizens, especially the vulnerable that live among us in our communities. And of course, the final fourth fourth pillar is, is that it is inappropriate for civil government to heap debt upon the backs of our children and future generations. But let's take a look at these four points as rally points. Now, let me use an example. I, I was uh, blessed one year. I had a friend who had a condo in a place called Phuket, China, or Phuket Thailand. And, uh, and we had an opportunity to go and stay in their condo. And what I discovered when I was there was this was one of the places that was really badly hit the year that the tsunami came in on Boxing Day, right after Christmas. You remember there was a major tsunami that hit the whole coastline there of Thailand. And on this one beach, it's called Neharn, where we were, there was, it was where a big, the big tsunami came in and the water came in and ended up going in about three and a half kilometers inland so they found beach chairs and sadly they found people that were deceased that were on the beach that were washed inland about three kilometers it was devastating for them at the time but by the time we got there of course we just saw that this was the place where it happened and there was no evidence that there was any challenge at all with what had occurred there except for one time when my wife and i were walking up in the hills uh, over behind the, along the, the valley that came up from the beach. And we noticed that there were these large signs, these large blue signs that were called rally points. And what these signs were, were they were signs that were erected after the tsunami because they realized that in the event that there was another tsunami, that they wanted to give people a place that they could identify and go to if they had another crisis situation like that, where there was going to be a tsunami coming in. 
And when you look at these rally points, you realize that in a time of crisis, there's all sorts of chaos going on around you. There's a need for people to have sort of a pre-plan down so that if something happens, maybe your family gets separated, we're all going to meet back at this one sign up on the hill or this other sign over on the other hill and everybody's got a plan. Well, that's how we should be considering and using our rally points. If we're going to be coming on the National Leadership Briefing and we're going to be learning, drilling, and training that the four pillars are our rally points, then we need to also expect to use them. And give, let me give you a couple of examples as to what I might consider a crisis scenario where it's time to remember our rally points. The first thing is, is let's say there is a legislative proposal that comes through the House of Commons, and all of a sudden you are faced with this proposal that appears on the surface to be something that's just not quite right. Perhaps it's an attack on, on, on something you believe or an attack on, the, on, the, on your religious freedom. But what you want to train yourself to do is, is that when you see something that is a threat, you want to immediately turn to the rally points and then start viewing the threat through the lens of those points. So knowing the rally points is one thing, but training yourself to go to the rally point when you see something that you think is a threat is something you need to train and drill on as well. So a legislative proposal comes through. A good example would be is if you asked yourself the question, it does this impose the authority of government, for example, this one piece of legislation, does this impose the authority of government on the authority of me as a parent and my right to raise my children the way that I want? Or is this an infringement on my right of belief or freedom of religion? Or is this going to add debt to the burden that's being placed on the backs of my children and future generations. So we look through the lens of these pillars at legislative proposals, and we train ourselves to run to the four pillars when we have a crisis like that to deal with. Another one is candidates pre present themselves out of nowhere. Now, you might say, Doug, why is that a crisis when you've got a candidate? Well, you've got all of a sudden you have an election going on right now. And we're going to talk a little bit about the CPC leadership election, for example, that's come that's upon us right now. Well, it's a bit of a crisis in that you've got to make a decision as to who to vote for. Well, how do you evaluate the candidates? Well, again, a bit of a crisis go back to the four pillars, you look at the candidates through the lens of the four pillars, and you ask questions that reveal to you what it is their views are through asking them questions from the perspective of the four pillars, because you've run to the rally point, you're focusing on that, and you can ask them straight out, uh, are you going to defend my right of belief and freedom of religion? Because recently in the House of Commons, Bill C-4, for example, a, what was called the conversion therapy bill came through the House of Commons, and not a single parliamentarian in the House stood up in defense of right of belief and freedom of religion. So that would have been a good example of a crisis where we could have held people to account, which, by the way, we did you did. And I think it's awesome what you did there by holding them to account for that action. But uh, that is what we want to train ourselves to do. How about school board policy? Very important. That's crisis. All of a sudden, you've got school boards making policies locally, and you want to be able to train yourself. Wait a second, I'm feeling the weight of, uh, of authoritarianism, and I'm feeling tyranny. And I and I think the my authority as a parent is being compromised here. So I'm going to speak to these issues from the perspective of the four pillars. Now, one thing I want to tell you about rally points and the rally points that we have designed for you here on the National Leadership Briefing. Now, they came from you, but what's interesting about that is, is that when we when these surveys generated these points, they came from you, but what they did was they created this opportunity where we could design the language so that it is something that you can gather and get affirmation and get collective support around. So if you're challenged and you are challenging a school board policy person or somebody locally, you can use the language of the four pillars because it's designed not to be con confrontational, but it's designed to be affirming. In other words, you can say, hey, 
don't you don't you agree that it's 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 important for me as a parent to have the authority to raise my children the way they want? Isn't that something that's important to you too? Like you're gathering support around your ideas because the rally points, like those signs up on the hill in Phuket, they're designed to be in a specific place and say certain things so that you can easily identify with them and use them if the crisis occurs. So that's the way I'd like you to view the perspective of these rally points with the four, four pillars, practice them, you think strategically about them, you have the plan to use them when in a crisis situation, and definitely maintain focus on the points themselves. And you'll find they'll work very well for you. Well, I hope that's helpful, because I think it's really important that, uh, that we understand why the points are there for us and how they can best be used. All right, so we're going to take a quick break here, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you our dashboard of service that we use to execute our strategies here at the National Leadership Briefing and for the organization Canada Family Action, which is the parent, obviously, of this project here. Okay, so we'll be back in a flash. Thanks so much for your time. Bye for now. Okay, let's keep moving. Now I have changed things up a bit in the background here, as you can see, but we do want to continue on with the theme that we have today. And that is the importance of working strategically, having a plan and maintaining focus. And our service dashboard here at our organization has helped us to do that. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, first of all, before I start getting into what you might think looks complicated back there, but I'll show you in a second here, it's really not that complex. But the reality is, is back in 2016, when we first st started surveying the people we serve in our organization and asking them what was important to them, we got an awful lot of feedback to the organization. And of course, if you look at the four pillars story on the National Leadership Briefing website, you'll see that's where the four pillars came from. They actually came from you. Those four things that you identified as priorities, those things were the things you wanted us to focus on as an organization. Well, we learned an awful lot more about you over that period of time as well and since then. And so what happened was what about a year ago, we developed something called a service dashboard, which, which helped us to organize our solutions as we delivered them to you in response to what you said was important to you. Now, of course, if you take a look, we're just going to break it down into a couple of sections here. I can't show you the whole dashboard today, but I, I'm happy to, to show you all of this information on private calls, or if you want a, pre, a, a separate briefing or for your organization, happy to do it. But this is really a response to what you told us you wanted us to focus on. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because, again, I want to show you that that it has been very helpful for us as an organization to be thinking strategically and, and, and working in this way with a plan. And I'll show you why it works now. Now, first of all, as you can see, the National Leadership Briefing, that has become the face of our outreach. That NLB is really the thing you see first when you look upon the projects of our organization, which is, who are you guys? What are you all about? Well, I'll tell you what we're all about. We're all about the authority of parents to raise their children the way they want. We're all about respecting right of belief and freedom of religion and the requirement that the laws and policies of Canada provide for the safety and security of the citizens. And we want that burden of debt lifted off the back of the backs of our children and future generations. So as you can see, the face of this organization and, and what, what it, we're all about rolls off my tongue because I have answered that question an awful lot. Who are you guys? So that is what, definitely what we do. Now, when you see 4P, 
that is a need that we had because as your needs changed, we needed to continue to develop different products and do things in a different way that would help meet your needs better. So that's our R&D. That's the R&D segment there. 4P stands for four, four pillars. So what we're looking to do right now, and this is some of the projects we're working on, is four pillars and getting that NLB out there in French. That's one thing in our nation. We've always, it's always been on my heart. There's so many people that we have not yet touched in Quebec that are, that don't speak English. And we would just really want to get this message to them as well. So in that research and development stage, that's where that work is done. I also have a heart for kids to, Hey, is there a, is there a way to help kids to understand the importance of why mommy and daddy raise you and not the government? Is there any way of getting that message across? So NLB for kids is another thing that's on our heart and something we have been building the framework of in that R&D development segment there. Now, we also have something, if you go to our website, it's called CAG Ministries. Again, churches were being overwhelmed is the feedback that we got with the pace of change out there. We had so many churches that were just going, my gosh, Doug, I have a thousand questions and I don't know how to do any of it. And what's this about? And what's that about? So what we encouraged churches to do was to actually build an infrastructure under the pastor to help them, a ministry of their church, a CAG ministry, it's called a citizen action group ministry under the pastor to support the pastor in helping to navigate all of these things. And so if you go on our NLB Canada website, that's nlbcanada.ca website, you'll see a separate menu tab called the CAG ministry menu tab. And there you'll be able to see a pastor telling a story about the CAG ministry in their church. And by the way, that same pastor is the pastor who has agreed to allow any of you in any churches across the nation to sort of follow along with them as they have navigated and you can actually get on their mailing list and attend their functions online and you can do all these things with them and just to see it and see how the how it works so that you could build one in your own church so CAG Ministries is an important solution that we needed to deliver through our organization now I'm going to miss this one for now because we're going to come back to that in a sec, but I want to get to this one here because KITE stands for Kingdom Influence Training and Education. Now what we found was is that there's so many different issues out there that we needed to be able to have a menu or a library of resources of, 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 of the things as they come up. So for example, a few years back, we had a situation in our nation none of us had ever seen before or dealt with before, and that was that all of a sudden our civil government at the highest level, the federal government, was going to become a, be, begin a conversation about under what circumstances would it be legal in Canada for one Canadian to help take the life of another Canadian. And that, of course, I'm talking about is euthanasia. Euthanasia in our nation was about to become legal, and we were all kind of caught, caught a little flat-footed because we really hadn't thought a lot about that. Well, we have built relationships with in people who are you know a tremendous amount of that subject, and that's the Euthanasia Prevention Coalition. And so I'm going to provide that name, just to give you an example, on a list in our post-briefing notes today, along with all of the other resource providers that we have. Like, for example, there's a fantastic organization in Alberta that was doing a great job with education. So we brought them on the briefing, and we gave you their contact information and said, hey, look, check this out. This is Parents for Choice in Education from Alberta, and you can go to their website, and they've got great resources. If you're a parent trying to navigate this, this infringement of, 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 of school boards on the authority of parents to raise their own children, then definitely you can go to those resources that we have in our library. Another one right now we're dealing with is that we have a situation where the federal liberal government is flirting with the idea of decriminalizing prostitution, which would cause a great great threat to women and young girls in our nation. And so we definitely want you to have the resources there to understand why it's a threat. And what's the relationship between prostitution and human trafficking and organized crime. And so all of these resources I'm going to give you as an example as to the solutions we provide. So, so when you're in relationship with us and something comes up, we're not always going to become the teachers, but we're going to offer you the library of information so that you can go, okay, great. Let's look down the menu 
you and go, okay, I definitely need information about that, right? So we also got, we've got organizations, pro-life organizations who specialize in pro-life, electing pro-life candidates, for instance, the organizations right now. I'll make sure you have that information as well all the time. So anyway, our resource partners and the information that they have to share is offered as kingdom influence training and education materials. Now, well, I'll, I'll jump into here for now because I want to just to explain one quick section here because we're going to touch on it later is, is that we want to make sure that spec ops here, this in the middle here, this is called special operations. And that is, is that when we see opportunities or threats to any of the things that we deal with. So if, 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 if we've got any one of the four pillars or any one of the issues that we're focusing on here, we need to launch a special operation, which is taking people who are trained specifically in those areas, bringing them together, helping them to, to formulate their strategy, and then deploying them out to either confront the, uh, the, the threat or capitalize on the opportunity. And War Room Canada is, the, is one of those special operations that you're seeing deployed out there right now. Now, just so you know, this KC here stands for Kingdom Compliance because we also have a group of people who are long in the tooth, who have been around for a long time in the faith in Canada, who watch the work that we do in special operations and make sure that we are not out there acting in an unbiblical way. So, so they, we've invited them to be a part of just the oversight of our organization and that we want to make sure that if we actually deliver a solution or strategy or start acting tactically that we're not doing it in an unscriptural way. We really, it's important to us that we're not contravening any of God's laws or man's laws in the execution of our strategy. So, so this is what our template looks like. And again, all these other things here, I'll tell you, this is strategic prayer teams. Strategic prayer teams actually envelop the whole plan. So as we deliver all these strategies, then we want to have prayers praying over each of these deployments, each of these things that were initiated. If we launch a new, uh, a new research and development project, we want somebody praying over it. Like right now, we're gathering information on human trafficking through some academics and, and, and helping them. So we provide prayer cover for them, right? So these things are happening all the time. Now, the reason why I'm prefacing this again is I'm emphasizing the need to work strategically, have a plan, and maintain focus is is that we're going to introduce you now to somebody who there's an event coming up who is a solution provider. Now, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to introduce him here in a second, but I'm just saying, if you've got time on April the 7th, you've got to make some time. If you've got a heart for transformation in families and in your community, then this stands for Community Action Councils. And that is boots on the ground, how to get your city moving plan moving. And, and it's going to be a fantastic person for you to meet. So we'll come back in just a second. But before I leave now, I just want to say one thing, and I don't do this very often, is, is that if you want to sew into any of these strategic deployments that we've got, anything that we're working on here, then I invite you uh, to go to this website here over my shoulder. That's the website for Canada Family Action, familyaction.ca. And we would welcome partnership because the vision of our organization is always massively <laughs> by, by the resources. And I, I, I praise God that there's no shortage of vision around here, but we do, we, we do definitely want to make sure that the resources keep up with what it is we want to accomplish out there. So, so we're going to go come back in a second here. We're going to talk about community action councils, and I'm going to introduce you to somebody that you are not going to soon forget, and you're definitely going to want to hang around. The bear has been poked. It's time to wake up from our slumber and stand together, united as one. One family, one body, one church. We will not walk past the vulnerable. Say nothing, do nothing, and turn a blind eye. We are citizens of a great nation. We are good Samaritans to our neighbors. You are not alone. We are the largest unified voice in Canada. So, so we, we stand, stand united. united. This, this is our rally cry. cry. We, we are Christ to our, our nation. nation. This, this is our battle cry. cry. He shall have dominion from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Righteousness will reign. 
justice will prevail. We are united. Okay, I don't want to waste any time at all in introducing you to Adam, but I do want to actually, uh, I, I want to uh, read this uh, introduction because I want to get this right. Um, Adam and I serve on a uh, leadership council team for community action councils, and uh, and I, I know his heart, but I want to actually give you some of the details of his background here. Um, I'm going to be introducing you to Adam Peacock who is a, again, a member of the leadership team of the Statesman Project Community Action Council's focus group. That's one I'm on as well. He is also the founder of Feathervine, a ministry designed to cultivate expressions of faith and faithfulness in Sonoma County. That effort has been built upon the sustained work of building prayer and relationship among pastors and local churches in the area for over 25 years. So please uh, help me welcome Adam Peacock to share with us information about an event that's coming up. Well, thank you so much, Adam, for joining us today. Sure appreciate you taking the time. How are things in Sonoma? Well, you can see from my background that it's, it's beautiful and clear. Uh, actually, things are, are going great here. I live in Sonoma County, Santa Rosa, California, and um, excited for our chance to talk today. I have to tell you, besides kind of being national neighbors, uh, my wife is from New Zealand. She's still a Kiwi citizen. And so this kind of whole Commonwealth thing is actually something that we value uh, in our household and home. So definitely feeling at home and love a chance just to talk with you again, Doug. Love the work that you're doing. And uh, just a, a shout out. I think this is my first time on the National Leadership Briefing. Yeah. And uh, so I feel like I've accomplished a life goal today. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said first time because we're going to have you back. Now, uh, I've, I've told everybody already, you and I uh, serve together on a leadership team uh, that uh, is focused on transformation of families and communities. And uh, you have this event coming up, or we do, because there's it's exciting. We're, we've are we been planning this event for a little while. We want to invite all of the members of the National Leadership Briefing to come along. Tell us about the event that is coming up that people are invited to. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks for, for that setup. As you know, uh, I kind of grew up, my, my dad was an early adopter in this uh, framework of bringing communities together, bringing churches together within a community to begin to impact them, meet needs in, in ways, you know, there are some things that we can do together that uh, we can't do apart. And so um, on April 7th, 11 a.m. Eastern, um, the Community Action Council uh, leadership team, which we're both a part of, is going to be hosting uh, a Zoom event. So this is an opportunity where you can, wherever you're located, you can uh, click on the link and join us for a roughly hour-long discussion of what it looks like to um, get your city movement moving. So what's it look like to bring people of God together with people of goodwill to do things in our community that express the character and values of God's kingdom, that um, meet needs, that develop relationship, and that release the creativity that, that God has on his heart um, for every place. And so we're excited. This is going to be the first of a whole series of Zooms that we're going to be making available where we'll highlight different communities, different leaders, where we're seeing things happen in that community that, uh, that reflects kind of what happens when the people of God come together um, to advance the, the message of hope, to express the love of Christ, and to um, really walk out what the gospel looks like empowered in the lives of God's people in a community. So wow. I'm really excited about the Me opportunity too. to be the first person presenting. To yeah, talk you're the about, one. You're the speaker. That's yeah. Right. And, you know, to talk about <laughs> what we've seen God do here in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited because when I ran into you, I, I, I just before uh, you came on here today, um, I've gone over uh, some of the basically the grid of how we deliver solutions to those people we serve people in churches, families, and, uh, and this community action councils and the and the heart of, of the church, just in motion locally 
is really in the DNA of our organization and the people we serve. And so we're excited when somebody brings a solution along and says, hey, wait a second, we're not only going to like launch one call, we're, we're, there's going to be a series rolled out in the days ahead and people can carve into it. Like they can basically talk and listen or listen to people that, uh, t- talk about the successes they've had. I know you've had great sex- success in Sonoma. I mean, that's just amazing. But we're going to hear from you and other leaders on the road ahead who have walked this road you know, and, and are, have some real time experience. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that's so exciting to me about it is while we are, you know, looking to engage with pastors and, and leaders of our faith communities, this isn't just for pastors, this movement, this vision, when we're talking about community action councils, it recognizes, I think you talk about jurisdictions, right? It recognizes people in different fields with different giftings, anointings, different circles of influence, how we can come together to really um, see change being catalyzed in our communities. This is, these are ways that we get our city movements moving. Uh, you know, there's that, that uh, statement, it's hard to steer a parked car. And so how do we get something going in? And often you'll see in a community that while um, I think every movement like this to be healthy, churches need to be involved. They need to be coming together. Prayer is at the foundation of all of it. The truth is many times it's a catalytic event or a catalytic, catalytic group operating outside you know, what would be considered the four walls of the church that really begin to advance something powerful taking place in the community. I know uh, in my story here, while I was pastoring, uh, we had an issue, we had a need around gangs in our community. And it was in the church coming together to meet those needs and in coming alongside law enforcement, coming alongside other key community groups that we begin to see doors open that um that we've not seen before just hosting our traditional outreach events and Mm -hmm. you know traditional potlucks and and that sort of a thing so um this isn't just uh you know an invitation for pastors to tune in this is really for anyone who has a heart to see their community better reflect you know what god's thinking about when he thinks about uh, that specific place. And, and that's a key part of this as well. Um, we really believe that place matters. We believe that God calls us to make an impact where he's placed us. And that uh, in the same way, we've been uniquely fit to impact that community. That community has actually been uniquely fit to draw out the grace and virtue of God from our lives. So uh, if you live somewhere, I want to challenge you live there on purpose find out the story of that place, learn the history of that place. And I hope that uh, what we're going to do on April 7th is going to encourage that, give people some, some great steps to consider, equip them with some principles, but also provoke passion mm. for life. You know, as we talk about, uh, have fun making a difference where you live, uh, feel like it matters that you're there. And, uh, and I guarantee you, it does matter that you're there. And uh, there's a lot of joy and fun that happens when we recognize that we're making a difference in, in the place where we live. Man, I can't wait. This is going to be a great call. You see, you got me all fired up now. How about that? Uh, this is great. Hey, I, I've accomplished something. <laughs> That's one. But you know what? You're also talking to a lot of other people right now. So I'm sure they're as excited too. Now, I got to make sure that uh, everyone knows. Remember, if you're on the National Leadership Briefing and you're registered, you've registered yourself for the briefing. That means that if you're watching this at home, you are going to receive a video of the briefing after, but you're also going to get special links that you can click on so that you can actually uh, uh, register for and be a part of the actual Transformer Zoom call on April the 7th. But we're also going to extend an invitation. Adam and I talked about this before. We're going to extend an invitation for you to join us on the Facebook page. And so you could track along with us and where you're going to see things shared on the road ahead as well of not only other events, but also other resources and things that are going to help you along. Transform 
families and communities all across the nation. Adam, thanks so much for joining us today. I sure excited. I can't wait till April the 7th. I'm looking forward to having all of us join you and hear what you have yeah. to share on that day. Yeah, Doug, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it also. And, and I know that each person who tunes in, they're going to have something to, to add. We're building a community as you are that I think is going to make a difference. Uh, you know, yeah. all everywhere where we are, uh, a difference is going to be made. So uh, I'm grateful. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, I'm expecting big things. Thanks so much, Adam. Have a great day. All right. Bye -bye. God bless. Oh, I just love that guy. Okay, so I'll make sure you get that information in the post-briefing notes today uh, and continuing to move on at a fairly brisk pace today because we are coming down the home street stretch pretty quick. Uh, but I do want to show you this one page of, uh, of where you can find some fantastic information on bills in the Senate. Now, let me just explain what happened here is, is that obviously we're, today it's all about working strategically we're, to, we're, we're, we're talking about having a plan and we're talking about maintaining focus. Well, recently what has happened is, is that there, there was a, a piece of, uh, I guess it was some kind of some thing that went viral online. And it was this, uh, this thing that dragged a lot of people's attention off in another direction. And, the, and where their attention was dragged to was regarding Senate bills. And so I just want to, I want to say, look, if, if you want to act strategically, work in a strategic way, and you want to work a plan and you want to stay focused, I'm going to show you how to cut through all of the noise and get right to the signal on if you are hearing about bills that are coming down the pipe, uh, as, and, and here, let me go this way. This is something I deal with all the time and consider me your flight attendant on the flight. If I'm not freaked out about it, then there's no need for you to be freaked out about it is kind of what I encourage you to do. Now, it doesn't mean that we, we chase after legislation that runs through the house as well. Like we don't do that, but we do, we will bring things to your attention and other organizations will bring them to your attention. Just don't let somebody grab your attention online and, and drag it. Cause there's a lot of stuff that goes viral out there that really is is intended to distract you it is it's actually designed to distract you from signal and it is really uh it's it's kind of like tricky it, you know they, they kind of want to drag your attention away so you're ineffective but we're strategic working a plan and maintaining focus so we're not going to be dragged off so here let me show you this page so you can use this in the future for any time you see anything about bills moving through the senate and in fact the house of commons as well let's have a look at this website here Okay, so here is the website. It's called Legis Info. I'm going to make sure you have this information in the post briefing notes today. If you look in the top left hand corner, it says Parliament of Canada. And there are two tabs there Senate and House of Commons. Those are both the uh, houses of the uh, Parliament of Canada. And uh, what you can see here is you'll see that you are on an overview page, which is where I'm going to ask you to start. And that's the link I'm going to send you is the overview page because you can use this one page like if you are someone who wants to pray this is an excellent page to check in on daily because you can see on this page you can see the actual bills that are before the house of commons and being actually debated on that specific day now i'm taking you back to the 29th of uh of march here uh, but uh, if you take a look here, how about that for people who like to pray? You've got in the House of Commons on the 29th of March, there was only one bill, that's C-11. You see how I've hovered over that? And all of a sudden it pops up and it says, an act to amend the Broadcasting Act to make related and consequential amendments to the other acts. Now you've heard about this one because this is basically uh, what it boils down to is government control over what is seen and uh, and shared on the internet. So this is this is giving the government more control and limiting your uh, freedom, free free speech rights. So this is one that you definitely want to pay pay attention to. Uh, and then over here, you take a look, and there's all these bills in the Senate. Now, do you remember what we were talking about? Was is there was a piece of uh, of you know, I guess internet. Uh, what do you call it? Propaganda, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even see it. It was just my phone lit up and everyone's asking me about this uh, government, uh, you know, to plan to, to ram all this legislation through the Senate. Well, do you see all those numbers there and all those bills? Well, those are all bills with three numbers behind the S. So if I come over here, all these bills have three numbers behind the S. 
Okay. Now, one thing I want you to know about these bills with three numbers behind them is, is that these are called private Senate bills. So these bills are just individual pet projects, perhaps of individual senators. Uh, maybe they're maybe they're just something that gets reintroduced all the time. But look at all of them. Look at all of them there. And these are just like one senator might have this great idea to do something, and uh, and or maybe they're flying flying a trial balloon. That's that's fair. Maybe they want to test the waters and and on a subject. They did that with Bill C four. It used to be Bill C six, Bill C eight. Bill uh, you started in the Senate as S two hundred two, S two hundred one. I mean, there was it definitely starts as a private member bill. So they there can be some things you need to pay attention here. But all of this business, I make this point because all of this business falls behind on the calendar's priority on the business of the Senate, it falls behind the government business. Because if you take a look at this one here, it says Senate government bill S4. That's a government bill of the federal liberal government S5, a federal Senate government bill. But this is a Senate public bill. Okay, because it's got three numbers behind it. Right. And then here's a House government bill. You see this down here, a House government bill and the Senate. Okay. So we're going to use, we're going to use this website because now on daily agenda, on the daily agenda of the Senate, you can now go in there and pray for whatever. Now, if you've got one bill, for example, S-233, an act to develop a national framework for guaranteed basic livable income, which is by the way, a terrible idea. And I'm glad you're paying attention to that, but it's how much of your attention should it get? right? Because it's only been in first reading. You can see that it's only gone to first reading and second reading is in progress. And it's not going to be back on here again until February the 24th. Uh, it was on again. So we don't even have any more information about this bill. But you see where it says major speeches here? I'm hovering over major speeches. If you want to find out more about this bill, you can click on major speeches there. And then you can see, oh, well, let's take a look at the speeches. Well, there's the sponsor's speech. So we can look, click on that, the sponsor speech, and then the sponsor speech is all right here. You can read the whole thing. You can learn about what it is, what their view is. Like the sponsor obviously is a, is a federal liberal. So you can just go, wait a second. I'm going to definitely want to check that out and find out what the perspective is of this person. But you have the information right at your fingertips as to what their perspective is on the uh, bills that are going through the Senate. And this tool is super important. I do want to encourage you, though, to keep in mind that all of these bills here, all of these bills here, if you take a look, they're all you've got you've got the status of them here. You see how there's a number one, two, three, and then one, two, three. OK, that's at first reading. That is a long way away from becoming law. So so we don't need to drag our attention off of the important priorities to start dealing with some of this stuff and spend a lot of time talking about it online or getting engaged in conversations with people or arguments about it and all that stuff. I'm just saying, let's be strategic. Let's work a plan and let's maintain focus, but use this site. I mean, this is a fantastic site, but unless you see like, you know, me freaking out about it or Fatine freaking about, about it or any of the, like, honestly, it's not that we don't care because we do care when someone starts talking about guaranteed basic livable income. But at this point in time, I just don't see the government of the day, this government, bringing that forward as a priority immediately in front of us. So, okay, so now that doesn't mean it's not going to become a priority because quite honestly, this is going to become a priority in the future and not so distant future. But right at this moment, there are other things to focus on. Okay, well, thank you for letting me share that with you. Now, again, that site is fantastic. You can click on the text of the bill there. You can get the exact language of the bill. Uh, but again, go, if you're going to go into a site like that, I would go into that site with a plan. Like if I'm going to go into that site, don't don't go into the site to get yourself all worked up, because I tell you, when you read that speech on guaranteed basic livable income, that alone will light your fire. You know, I mean, that'll get you going, but don't let it get you all riled up because I'm not riled up about it um, because there's other things to focus on, which leads me into this other uh, last segment I want to share with you because I told you that we were going to talk about War Room Canada and uh, I have a special guest that I want to introduce you to and uh, of course it's the uh, the uh, tier one operator that uh, sits in the war room and uh, so let's introduce him to you now. 
Well, thanks so much, Doug. It's good to be with you on the National Leadership Briefing. I know this is kind of funny because here I am, Doug Sharp, in the war room, and uh, and I'm a guest on the National Leadership Briefing hosted by Doug Sharp. But uh, hey, let's go with it. Have some fun. Anyway, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to share War Room with everybody who is on the National Leadership Briefing. Again, for those of you who have not heard of what is happening here is we just saw this. Remember, we do, we do horizon training all the time on the National Leadership Briefing, but we saw this incredible opportunity on the horizon. And that was for us as citizens of Canada to, to do one tiny little thing, and that's purchase additional authority in the form of a political party membership, and then take that authority and come together and help to choose who could become the next prime minister of our nation. And it's all wrapped up in the strategy called Operation Red Flag. Now, again, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail because this is exciting news. So Operation Red Flag, what that is, is really the plan, the strategy and the tactical maneuvers and moves that we have to make over the course of the next week, weeks and months ahead to bring us to a point in time where we achieve a mission objective of having somebody elected to lead the Conservative Party of Canada that is someone who is willing to represent and respect and defend the principles that are reflected by the four pillars. And that is the reason why you see this NLB logo over the War Room Canada behind me, because this is a national leadership briefing initiative, Operation Red Flag, with a very specific mission and mission objective. Again, that is to identify the next prime minister of a nation, someone who's going to respect those principles within the four pillars. Now, what is it that we're doing every single day as part of the operation? Well, every single day we have an outreach on social media platforms, Facebook, we've got an outreach on uh, Twitter, YouTube, we just start, started with Rumble, we're going to be on Getter soon, and all of these other platforms that we're trying to get on as quickly as we can, because we want to send out tools, a small short message every day to everybody that we serve on those platforms, so that you can take that message and turn around and share it with other people that are in your sphere of influence. The goal is, of course, for you to nail down your Conservative Party of Canada membership so you get a ballot, but then to consider those people in our lives that we can bless by telling them about the opportunity that they can have too to get their Conservative Party of Canada membership. Now, at the time of this, at the time of this National Leadership Briefing today, there's only just over 60 days left for us to actually get a membership and be eligible to vote because the deadline is June the 3rd. So this is what I'm, I'm recommending everybody do. First of all, go get your own membership. Just get it nailed down, conservative.ca. Just buy your membership. And I'm saying buy two years because when you get on the strat, when you start seeing the strategy roll out, you'll see that it's actually not a short-term plan. This is a long-term plan that's covering about two years and it's going to be a time that you're going to need to have your membership because we're going to be voting regularly with that authority over the two years. So get two year membership it might cost you 30 bucks. I think it's 15 bucks a year, or maybe two years is 25, whatever it costs, just get two year membership on the conservative.ca website. And then what we want you to do with the rest of your time leading up to that deadline on June the 3rd, is to use the tools that we provide every day through War Room and through what you see sent out from the National Leadership Briefing website and on the National Leadership Briefings themselves, use those tools to share with others to encourage them to participate as well. Because every single day, like I say, I'm online, I'm going online, and I'm doing a little bit of teaching, a little bit of helping, a little bit of encouraging, a little bit of adjusting, you know, and we're just going to keep working the plan for the next 60 some odd days until we get down to that deadline. Then we move from the recruit stage, which is Operation Red Flag starts with recruit, red, R, red, recruit. And then we go to the equipping stage. And that's kind of a fun period of time because that's when we get to meet the candidates and consider all of them. We're going to bring them on the war room for you. We're going to have conversations with them. Doug, you're going to host them on the National Leadership Briefing, I'm sure, like you did last time. And then, and then we're going to have a real good look at them so you can make your final choice as to who you want to be the leader of this party, the person who could become the next prime minister of our nation. And then finally, the final 
phase of the program after recruit and equip is the deployment. And that's when we're going to train you to handle your ballot when it arrives in the mail, because you're going to get mailed a ballot. And it's kind of tricky. You'd be surprised how many people have t trouble with the ballots. So we're going to make sure we get 100% of the, of the people who are tier one operators, the ones that are engaged in Operation Red Flag, 100% of you are gonna get your ballots filled up properly and sent in before the deadline. And we're gonna be totally on point, mission accomplished at that point, the final elections on September the 10th. So that's what we're doing here in the war room, NLB War Room Canada. We're gonna be here all the way through this process where we're gonna be executing the strategy we need to exercise to actually get the results we need as far as leadership in our nation. Excited to be working with you. Excited to be working with everybody on the National Leadership Review. And of course, Doug, you're such an awesome guy. I love working with you too. Thanks for the opportunity to share it today. Bye for now. Well, thanks, Doug. Hey, it's good to know that you're on my six. Very excited to have you here on the National Leadership Briefing. And uh, I know this seems kind of weird, but <laughs> hey, again, remember, if you're not having a good time, you're doing it wrong. So uh, we just wanted to share War Room with you. Like I say, that is the visual that people are going to see every single day uh, on the social media platforms, our YouTube channel. That's the National Leadership Briefing YouTube channel. You can find all the past daily videos there. Uh, what Doug has done there and, and, and what we've done there is we've, <laughs> I, I, I got to actually get off this. Okay, okay. What I've done there is, uh, is, is daily when we send out a message, one week we focus on different themes. Like, so we got the first week was on strategy. The second Second week that we did this it was about belief building and raising your level of belief because again remember what we said today here on the briefing is is that we want to be working strategically having a plan and maintaining focus so that's what we're doing is we're building the components of the operation so that we guarantee our success by June the 3rd because that is the membership cutoff date so anybody who doesn't have a membership in that party after June 3rd is not going to have any authority. They're going to have zero say in the outcome as, as, as they've said before, but it's important that what we do is we don't miss this opportunity for ourselves, but more importantly, that we don't miss this opportunity to share with other people because every single time, like you say, every single time people want to know about things like this and it's up to us to get the message out there. Now, just to kill this one little thing that might be rolling around in your head are we a partisan organization here at National Leadership Briefing or Canada Family Action? Do we favor one political party over another? No. What we do is we constantly look for opportunities where we can advance the things that we believe in into the political sphere within political parties. And this just happens to be the party right now that gives us the highest leveraged position to advance the things that we believe in into that party. Because the leader of the party, the entire party follows the nose of the leader, they say. So even though the leader doesn't have all the power within a political party, because a grassroots party has grassroots authority with the membership at policy conventions. We're going to get into that. But a lot of what happens within a party will happen at, to our favor if that person was willing to represent our views and values and the views and values that are represented in the four pillars. So this is an important project. It's an important operation. That's why we're dedicating this extra time to it. And that's why we're giving you the opportunity as well. If you want to sow into any of the work that we're doing here, Believe me, resources are much appreciated anytime, but right now, as we're ramping up, the more resources we have, the more we can do with it. So go to familyaction.ca and you can find a link where you could actually partner with us and all of the projects we do here. So thanks so much for your time today. It's been a wonderful experience for me spending time with you today. I, I just pray blessing over you. I pray blessing over your family and I will continue to pray the, the blessing of the Lord falls upon our great nation of Canada. Until next time, and we'll see you in the war room. Bye for now. Once every year, the 11th month on the 11th day at the 11th hour, we stand in unity to commemorate the end of World War I and to honor the great sacrifice of those who fought to preserve our freedoms. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow. Between the crosses, row on row. Oh Canada, are you still a country worth dying for? Do we honor our fallen heroes? What were their hopes, dreams, and aspirations?
Did they believe that we should be free to raise our children the way we want? Did they give their lives to defend our right of belief and freedom of religion? Did they consider Canada to be a place that would protect the citizens, especially the vulnerable? Was freedom truly worth dying for? That we should not be enslaved by massive debt heaped upon our children? Yes, these freedoms were worth dying for. Today, we continue to honor those who serve our country, lest we forget and fall victim to a tyranny that is eager to rise once again. Yesterday's freedoms were worth dying for. Do we now call them privileges only for them to be taken away? Oh, Canada, what is freedom worth today? Lest we forget and no longer stand on guard. Do we wear poppy while paving a road of oppression right through Flanders fields? No. We wear poppy because we remember them. We stand with their brothers and sisters in arms and we honor them by preserving the freedoms that they fought to preserve. World War I was deemed the war to end all wars, but we know this was not the last of wars. To this day, brave men and women take a stand and we stand with them. We stand on guard with those who choose to sacrifice their well-being to preserve our freedoms. We don't forget why we wear poppy while we're wearing a poppy. We remember. Come on, Canada. Now is the time more than ever. Stand up and wear your poppy proud, lest we forget.